Good evening. Welcome to Lay Metro. How are you? Fine. How are you? Anyone who works here knows the traffic never lets up. No matter how heavy the traffic is, we know how to turn this into that. But what about wine? How do these beautiful grapes become a delicious Chardonnay? Shouldn't we know enough to talk to our customers about how wine is made? Do you? Do you know the basic steps to winemaking? Hey Justin, which has more skin contact, red or white wines? I don't know, chef. When do winemakers use oak barrels or stainless steel? I don't know, chef. Whether you're part of the waitstaff, chef, or even a sommelier, we can all learn more about the basic steps of winemaking. A little knowledge makes serving and pairing wines for your customer much easier and a lot more fun, too. So what are we waiting for? Let's go to where it all begins, the nature, land, and a lot less traffic. Where do we learn the basics? Maybe I can help. Excellent. Actually, great wine and great winemaking start right here in the vineyard. But instead of telling you, see for yourself. Great. The best California grapes come from vineyards planted near the coast. Vines benefit from the cooling coastal fog. Don't you need warmth to grow grapes? In your restaurant, you cook a roast slowly at a reduced temperature to coax out the richer flavors. It's the same with grapes. A long, cool growing season creates luscious, yet crisp flavors in the wine. So you're saying coastal fruit tastes better? And not only tastes better, tastes different. You see, it's about soil and growing conditions. We can plant the same varietal, for example, Chardonnay, in five different areas, and the wine from each of those areas will have a distinct taste. At Kendall Jackson, we plant our vines on mountains, ridges, hillsides, and benchlands. The higher elevation stresses the vine, which keeps the grapes small and the flavors intense. Winemaking is all about capturing those rich flavors. Man, this is some pretty steep terrain. Exactly, and that's just how we like it. How do you determine the precise time to pick these grapes? We keep the grapes on the vine late into the season. It's what we call hang time. This hang time allows the sugar in the grapes to increase the deep, concentrated flavors. We allow these coastal, mountain-grown grapes to reach their fullest flavor potential on the vine, and it's worth it. See for yourself. Mm. If you can't taste in the grape, it's not going to be in the wine. So once they're ready to pick, your job's done. Not so fast. We must be sure the fruit's in perfect condition when it's received at the winery. Well, let's go to the winery and see what happens next. I thought I left rush hour in the city. You're the guy I've been looking for. How exactly does that become this? Well, let me show you. Once the grapes arrive at the winery, they undergo the stages of crushing or pressing, fermentation, secondary fermentation, barrel aging, and bottling. The process is different for making red wine and white wine. For white wine, we whole cluster press the grapes. Come on, I'll show you. For our white wines, the grapes are whole cluster pressed instead of crushed. This method places the grapes in a balloon or bladder press. As it inflates, it gently presses the grapes, extracting their juice. In this way, the juice is immediately separated from skins, seeds, and stems. For our Chardonnay, the juice is pressed and settled and transferred directly to French or American 60-gallon oak barrels. These beautiful barrels add creamy texture and subtle toasty oak flavors to the finished wine. For lighter white varietals like Sauvignon Blanc or Riesling, the juice is transferred to a stainless steel tank to enhance those crisp, fresh fruit flavors. 
When we winemakers are talking about the fresh fruit in the wine, we're describing the aromas and the flavors that you can smell and taste in the wine. We don't actually add anything to the wines. Got it. But now that the juice is in the barrels, is it wine yet? It's getting there. Our experienced cellar team adds yeast, turning the sugars into alcohol. Then our Chardonnay undergoes fermentation again, but this time the malic acid, which is crisp, like green apples, is transformed into lactic acid, which is richer and creamier, like milk. With this malolactic fermentation, a mouthful to say, our Chardonnay is silky and rich and a mouthful to drink. Our wine is aged sur lee, meaning under the spent yeast cells, which have fallen to the bottom of each barrel. Every month, each barrel is carefully stirred, mixing the wine with the lees. This contact with the lees allows our wine to develop a soft, smooth, and creamy texture. But what about reds? Are red wines fermented and aged the same way? Well, not exactly, but we give them the same care and love as we do our white wine. Beautiful. For red wines, the grape skins are lightly broken and the juice, skins, and seeds are placed into stainless steel tanks. We control the temperature to about 50 degrees and cold soak this mixture we call the must for days. The contact between the grape skins and the juice provides the red wine with intense color as well as rich flavors and soft tannins. We raise the temperature, converting the sugars to alcohol. Once again, the red grape skins are left in contact with the juice for a period of a few days to a week to develop the tannins. Tannin is the drying astringent sensation on the palate that is generally associated with heavier red wines. Like our white wines, our red wines undergo malolactic fermentation in oak barrels, followed by aging in the cellar to gain additional body and finesse. For both red and white wines, we keep each vineyard lot separate so that every wine retains its unique character. That's as many as 2,100 separate lots to taste and keep track of. With hundreds of white and red wines to choose from, how do you determine the precise recipe to blend? There is no recipe. Every year's different. That's the fun of it. Our winemakers combine the many unique flavors from our vineyards to create the flavorful final blend. So that's it. For white wines, it's pressing, fermentation, malolactic fermentation, and aging. And for red wines, it's crushing, cold soak, fermentation, pressing, malolactic fermentation, and aging. And one more step. After months of handcrafting, we pay particular attention to the bottling process. We want to guarantee and ensure that we've captured all the great aromas and wonderful flavors in every bottle. Well, Randy, it's hard to believe you can fit all those winemaking steps into the single bottle of Chardonnay until you taste it. Until you taste it. Mm.